Hey friend, welcome to Self Transformed, a podcast dedicated to transforming your health in less time and guilt-free through the power of habit hacking. I'm your host, Emily Nichols, behavior change specialist, fitness and Whole30 coach, and Taco Tuesday enthusiast. (laughs) Hey, I know the struggle is real when it comes to taking care of you. I too am a working mom who felt physically and emotionally drained, but lacked the time and confidence to actually make myself a priority. Creating habit strategies around my health was the key to help me finally create a consistent, healthy lifestyle that does doesn't feel hard. I'm now on a mission to equip you with those same sustainable habit hacks to help transform your life from the inside out, guilt-free. Together, we will simplify your health into daily habits that don't feel like another thing on your long to-do list, but rather consistent actions that add up to a massive transformation that will stick through all seasons of your life. So if you're ready to have it hack your health and create your own self-transformation, then let's do this. You're listening to episode 158 of Self Transformed. Hey friend, welcome back to the show. I wanted to shout out everyone that took advantage of the summer sale last week. I have brought in so many new Whole30 Self Transform You and Habits That Stick clients, and I am just so proud of you for investing in yourself. I know that's really scary sometimes, and maybe you feel a little guilt sometimes doing something like that as well, because trust me, I have felt that all those feelings as well. But friend, it's going to be so worth it. You have made that investment, that energy exchange that is going to go into your own transformation, building a customized health plan for you. In the next four weeks, you're going to have a plan backed by habit strategy, ready to get you to the best version of yourself, helping you thrive and not just survive through all seasons of your life. You can go through these plans at any time. The beauty with the friends that enrolled in Self Transform You, they got my mini course, the Habits That Stick Starter Kit with it. You can get either of those anytime. You know, I made some changes to my programs, which I mentioned in the past couple of weeks with Self Transform You. You can get the course anytime. Anytime you want it, you can go purchase it, go through the four weeks. You can add on a habit hacking call with me if you want, or you can do self transform you next level where it is already included with weekly texting, Voxer access, and four one on one habit hacking calls. So the next round of STU next level, if you want to do the extra, <laughs> extra level with that high accountability coaching with me, that will be launching again on July 18th. But reserve your spot ASAP. I I only take five girls on for that every single month in order to be able to best serve everyone in that community. Or if you just need a little help with habit strategy, definitely check out the mini course, the Habits That Stick Starter Kit. And quite a few new Whole30 clients came on. I'm super excited. Remember, I am a plant-based Whole30 certified coach in addition to being a Whole30 certified coach. So if you love a plant-based lifestyle, I can help you out with that as well. But I'm excited to watch their lives change in 30 days just by evaluating their habits and relationship around food because that's where my own transformation story started, y'all. You know, this has been a journey for me since 2015. So if you want more information on any of my programs, you can just go to selftransformyou.com to learn more. That will give you all of the information you need. And of course, my DMs, email, all the ways, smoke signals, whatever you want to do (laughs) is open to be able to connect with me with any questions you have. So we are wrapping up this food series this upcoming Thursday for Habit Hack Thursday. But today we have Jazz Leaf of Recipes for Health on the show. And I just adore her. I love following following her on Instagram. She makes the most fun reels and simple. Like she breaks down cooking and recipe creation in such a simple way that doesn't feel overwhelming and overwhelming. It feels like something I could implement really easily into my life. And plus it's so colorful. If you go to her feed, which you should do, it's so colorful. It makes me feel so happy and hungry (laughs) at the same time. So we're talking with Jazz today about easy meal prep and cooking habits to really help you save time. You know, we're always looking for simple ways to cook and she has some major ones for us. And meal prep is such a 
hot topic all the time. I've tried so many various ways to meal prep. I talk a ton about the way I meal prep in STU and in my Whole30 Anytime course and the way I do it so it doesn't feel overwhelming for me now. But according to an article from thinkfitlivefit.com, I think this is really interesting because I was doing some research on meal prep. And one thing to note is that it can actually save you some money. So based on this article, based on where you shop and where you live, and the time of the year and what's going on in the world. Grocery shopping for meal prep can cost anywhere from like 60 to 100 bucks, okay? So if you eat three meals a day, that's about $2.86 to $4.76 per meal. So you can save around $2,600 a year if you meal prep for your lunches, just your lunches, as opposed to buying like a $10 lunch every day. That is huge. So it is not only a time saver, but it can also save you some money and you know you know where all those ingredients are coming from because they're coming from your pantry or your fridge and you're creating them with love for yourself and your family. So let me tell you a little bit about Jazz. She is a certified nutritional therapist practitioner, a private chef, and a cooking class instructor. After working in the corporate world for five years, she transitioned into the health and wellness space to help educate people on the power, the power of nutrition and how to prepare meals that help nourish and replenish your body. For three years, she worked in Indianapolis as a private chef to a few of the Indiana Pacers, and she's now bringing her knowledge in the kitchen to you through virtual cooking classes. Her style of teaching is relatable, comforting, easy to understand, and fun. Love all of those words describing it because that is exactly jazz in a nutshell. So you can join her every month virtually as she shares some of her favorite simple and healthy recipes so you can feel confident cooking in the kitchen. And something that's super exciting that Jazz brought up at the end of our interview that we just like decided to do it, and I love this so much. We are doing a giveaway together. We're hosting a giveaway together. So you'll see this posted on our Instagrams. You can follow me at Emily Nichols22. You can follow Jazz at recipes for the number four health. And I'll link that in the show notes for you as well. But follow us both and comment on the post that we're going to have up today. And three winners will get a one-month subscription to Jazz's online cooking classes. And those three winners will also get my mini course, The Habits That Stick Starter Kit, to help you learn some basic habit strategy to help transform your life. I'm super excited. All you have to do is like the post and make sure to follow both Jazz and me. And the winners will be chosen and announced um, on Friday the 8th of July. So I'm super excited. I'll remind you again of this at the end of the episode, but get a pen and paper handy. Maybe get yourself, you know, a little snacky snack. I like chompsticks with Kite Hill (laughs) dairy-free cream cheese. Melissa Urban had posted this on her Instagram stories a while ago, and I was like, that's so yummy. I love it so much. It's pretty much eating like almonds and um, a meat stick. So it's a really satiating snack. So grab whatever snack, a sparkling water, pop it open, pen and paper ready to go so you can learn some really, really simple and fun, easy meal prep and cooking habits with my friend Jazz Leaf. Make sure you stick around to the end. I'll share those three takeaways for you to help you take action and habit hack your meal prep. Let's go. All right, gang, thank you so much for tuning back in to Self Transform. I'm super excited to continue this food series. We talk a lot about food freedom here and hacks to really make cooking and eating food enjoyable and not very overwhelming. And I'm super excited to have my friend Jazz Leaf on the show to break it all down for us. So Jazz, thank you so much for coming on the show. Woohoo, I'm so excited to be here. Me too, I'm super excited. Super, super pumped. Okay. Well, the first question I ask every guest is what comes to mind when you hear the phrase self transformed? I really love this phrase because I think that it embodies the evolution of yourself and your growth. Mm. So, self transformed to me is going through hardships, experiences, struggles, talking to different people, learning about yourself, and then transforming yourself and, and kind of growing into a certain person Mm -hmm. that you want to be. And so I think it always is like a work in progress, but if you can take all your past experiences and just embody them all and 
create that person that you want to be. I think that's really, truly what self-transformed means. Totally. I, I asked that question because everyone gives a different response, which I love to hear. Um, but I love that you mentioned evolution because we're always evolving. And pretty much what we're trying to do on the show is give everyone a lot of different tools in their tool belt to help their own transformation. And um, food is such an emotional part of people's lives. It's a big part of people's culture. So I feel like it's a big part of the piece of pie, if you will, of our own transformation. Sometimes I think some people forget about at times. So, well, let's talk a little bit about your story. Can you share a little bit about us, maybe your own transformation story? So thinking of where you've been that has led you to really who you are and what you do today. Absolutely. Okay. So my story is a little unique. I worked in corporate America for quite a while, about five or six years. I always had a passion for health though. So I got an opportunity cooking as a private chef for professional athletes. And it doesn't just happen out of the blue. I actually had my nutritional therapist certification and my brother-in-law got drafted by the Pacers at the time. And so I was like, this is the perfect opportunity to get my foot in the door. So I took that leap of faith and I went full force into to the health and wellness world. And then from there, I started cooking for other players and kind of expanding that way, hosting cooking classes. So now I was in this new industry and I kind of took every opportunity I could to just continue cooking and say yes to everything. And I just so quickly became like very hustle, very nonstop, very yes, yes, I'll do it. I'll do it. Never sleeping, just go, go, go. And then I had this crazy experience where I think when I look back now, I think I had a lot of signs that were pointing me towards like, okay, you got to stop, you got to slow down, but I didn't listen. And unfortunately I was riding my bike one day over on the beach, heading to a yoga class. And then I got hit by a car from behind and the lady was sleeping at the wheel and she was super tired and I didn't see her coming. And so, I mean, miraculously, I was okay. I suffered from a lot of concussion injuries. I broke a bone in my foot. Um, The whole left side of my body was impacted, but it was a pretty bad accident and it took me completely starting from square one. So it was like this huge shock to me just to not be able to do anything. I couldn't move. I couldn't do anything. And I was used to just doing everything. And so I think that that really spiraled me into this, um, area of like spiritual awakening and just listening to signs around me, Mm -hmm. learning to nourish my body and just totally slow down. And I think through that, that was about three years ago. So through that now I'm much more slower paced and actually goes in hand in hand with food as well. Like I actually listen to my hunger cues. I figure out what my body wants. I've started eating a totally anti-inflammatory diet just because I had bruises everywhere and I was trying to heal. So through all of that, it's taken me, you know, many years to figure it out. But I think that all happens for a reason to help you end up where you're supposed to. And this is totally my path. I'm supposed to be sharing all these health, you know, health facts and, and used my, uh, I guess, expertise with cooking professionally, but bringing it into a more relatable way now. And tell us a little bit about what you do now. So now I actually host online cooking classes. So we host, you know, a few classes every month and they're all on Zoom. So my goal was actually to help bring, make cooking approachable for our people. So instead of feeling overwhelmed, like, oh, I'm looking at a recipe. I don't even know where to start. Like it says brown the meat. It's like, what the heck does that mean? So I'm like teaching super basic tips tips. Some of the classes are 20 minutes. Some of them are 30 minutes and some of them are meal prep classes. So we get together on Sundays. And if you want to just forget about cooking all throughout the week, we do it all together. And in my classes, I'll send you the grocery list ahead of town ahead of time. And it's kind of organized by aisle in the grocery store. So I kind of take the guesswork out of it because I don't want you to have to spend time on it. I'm already doing all the work. And I also found that in my past experiences, like I would try to meal prep for myself, but then you find like three different recipes on Pinterest. And then when you're trying to go make them, you're like, well, this has says four tomatoes. And then this says three tomatoes. And then I'm trying to add everything together to figure out, okay, what's the grocery list I need to make for myself at the store. So I take the guesswork out of it, but the big part about my classes are just using what you have. So I try try to teach people just like look at the grocery list. And if you have like 
you know, five of the eight items, please don't go to the grocery store. During class, we'll talk through the substitutions and certain things that you can do to use what you have. So again, I just want to make it approachable and interesting and fun and kind of bring confidence back to people in the kitchen. I love that so much, Jazz. Like, I love it when I'm like in the zone in the kitchen, just kind of like do, 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 just putting stuff together. Like all the clients I work with, um, when we talk about like food freedom, you know, I'm not a professional cook whatsoever. And I really preface that telling everyone that when we talk about food, but I'm a big believer in just like ingredient meals, like, okay, I got some protein, I got some veggies, I got some fat, I got some really good seasoning. Let's pile it all together. And that's a meal. Like I love a big bowl with a bunch of stuff in it and yes, just like perfect. And that just feels, I think why I like that so much is because it's not so overwhelming. Like you were saying, because we have so many things going on in our head so many tabs open and to think about what to make for dinner sometimes can just feel like daunting. I think that's why a lot of people will turn to like fast food or they like, I don't know, a bowl of cereal or, you know, and there's time and place for some, for things like that too. But over time, that just leaves you feeling not so great for sure. Right. Yeah, I completely agree. And to piggyback off of that, I think we just need to go back to basics. Like totally. let's not overcomplicate it just because someone says that I don't eat X, Y, and Z. Well, you shouldn't either. Like that doesn't mean anything. Let's just go back to basics. And if you don't have protein in a meal, but you're used to having protein, that's okay. That's all right. Just eat a big salad or eat something, you know, just, you can kind of have fun with it. There's no rules. Yes. I don't like food rules. I don't like food rules. Unless like you are following like a protocol, like a whole 30 year something and you're doing it to find out data about yourself, but then you take that data and you take it from there and creating your meals and see how they make you feel, you know, physically and mentally. And I love your story. Um, I don't love that you were hit on your bicycle. (laughs) That's one of my biggest fears for my husband. He he's a triathlete and rides outside a lot. And I'm always like, please be careful because it's the people coming behind you that you don't see. But I feel really drawn to that story though, Jazz. I recently just broke my sacrum almost two weeks ago, um, coaching at a class at Orange Theory. And I, I keep saying like, okay, I feel like God literally knocked me on my butt to make me slow down. Cause same thing. And I feel like a lot of women listening, to this could understand, like you, you're feeling just so run hustle, hustle, hustle. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I've got to do this. I got to do that. Oh, I got to take some time for self-care. Oh, I got to work out. Oh, I got to make dinner. And then sometimes it takes something in your life to literally knock you on your butt to slow yourself down. So I'm kind of in that journey right now, not as as traumatic as what your experience was, but just in a period where I'm like, okay, I hear you. What can I do to slow down and evolve during this time instead of like crumbling and being like, woe is me. I'm making the best of the situation. So I hope a lot of women can take a lot from your story today. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. I'm sorry that that's happening. And I believe it's all happens for a reason. So it's really cool that you're actually acknowledging that and actually slowing down because to your point, I think that I, that so many signs had come to me before Mm -hmm. and I just didn't listen or I chose not to listen. And that, and unfortunately it can be as drastic as getting hit by a car for it to be your sign to slow down. But hopefully if anyone is listening, yes, slow down. Even if you get the tiniest uh, like nudge to, I think getting sick is like a great example is like a lot of people get sick or like a stuffy nose or a headache or whatever. Like that's just, that's a sign. That's a sign. Just slow down. Slow down. Well, and I feel like a way we can do that is by the way we're fueling our body. And I'm really curious um, for you, Jess, because the way I see fueling your body, I feel like it could be not necessarily what people say, like food rules, like good or bad or healthy. But when you're thinking about fueling your body, like everyone that listens to my show, the way I love to fuel my body is with anything like taco wise, (laughs) or, or for me, it may be, or some days it may be like a big green, like like big plant-based meal for me sometimes as well. When you think about fueling your body, what, what comes to mind for you when you think about fueling your body? Um, okay. I love tacos. <laughs> I love that. But I think bio-individuality, I'm not sure if people are going to like that, but that's really the truth yeah. is like, I can't sit here and say like fueling my body means X, Y, and Z for me. So that's what you should do. I think 
every single person is different. So it is really important to experiment with different ways of eating and, you know, loading up on like carbohydrates, seeing how that feels and kind of going against the low carb fads that are out there and like loading up on really good complex carbohydrates, oatmeal, lots of fresh fruits and veggies, um, and just seeing how your body feels or on the other end, loading up on protein, just experiment with it all because I can't tell you what's going to work for you. But for me, like, for example, I'll just give you an example. Summertime, it's warm out. I'm usually kind of hot, you know, maybe I gone for an outdoor walk or something like that. And I love smoothies. Smoothies are a great way for me to, I feel like fuel my body. So I love adding frozen fruits, frozen veggies, some protein powder, some healthy fats, like chia seeds and hemp seeds, maybe even a spoon of like tahini or almond butter or peanut butter, and then load up some homemade granola on top. And to me, that's like heaven on earth. And I really like that. But then in the winter times, I don't really like that. It's really cold and it doesn't make me feel good. And I always shiver. And so kind of listening and like allowing yourself to figure out, okay, what's working for me right now? What's making me feel fueled. And, um, just be because maybe like a big salad, you know, people say I have a big salad a day, just because people say that maybe raw veggies aren't working for your digestion. So just steam them and have them roasted. So kind of listening to your body is my best answer for fueling. And I have to do the same. Totally. You took the words right out of my mouth. Cause I was just going to say, Oh, I love smoothies this time of year, but in the winter, I just cannot, like, I'll have to like, go get like a hot shower afterwards and like put on like warm clothes yeah. afterwards as much as I love them. Like, but I think that's really a really great point. Jazz is that everyone has different cravings and different needs for their bodies, but also being aware of what you're craving, like maybe now in a few months may not serve you anymore, depending on time of the year, what's going on in your life, you know, what, how are you? And I think people fail to fail to remember that your body is like a really great science experiment. You can experiment and see how things work or don't work and take that data for you and devise your own food freedom plan from there. For sure. I completely agree. We love that so much. Okay. We're all about saving time. Everyone, everyone in our community is always like, they feel guilty for taking time for themselves or they're like, oh, I just don't have time. And I want to know what are your top three kitchen gadgets to save time? Ooh, it's so fun. Okay. It's going to be time. really hard. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So, I mean, I am, I am an air fryer queen. I love the air fryer. I just can't, you know, and, and it took me so long to jump on it because I was like, oh, it's another thing that I need in my kitchen. Right. But honestly, it's been the best decision I've made. Uh, there's so many great air fryers out there. I've tried many. I use this one that has two baskets and, you know, in an air fryer nowadays, like you can do roast, you can do bake, dehydrate, reheat. Like there's so many different options. So like I'll take two baskets and one will maybe have my salmon in it and the other one will have my asparagus in it and they're cooking at different temperatures and, and maybe one's baking and one's air frying, but they have that ability to do that. And wow. so it just saves me so much time. And so air fryers, amazing. And there's small ones too. So if there's anyone listening out there, that's like, Oh, it's just one person. I don't want this huge gadget in my kitchen. There's like tiny ones that, you know, you could just replace your toaster actually, and just take your toaster off the counter and just throw the air fryer there. You can even air fry you can even toast in your air fryer. So kind of think of it, thinking of it like that. Um, so I love the air fryer. I definitely, this is like, I don't know if anyone would say this, but I would say a citrus juicer. So if no one's seen those before, they just kind of like you'd cut your citrus in half, whether it's orange, lemon, lime, and you just throw it in there. And then it kind of holds all the seeds and it just, you, you juice it out. So I use that a ton because I citrus is like every day, maybe in water, maybe in smoothies, maybe in tea, even like salad dressings, really anything. And so it just saves me so much time and like just holds the seeds in, um, and then I have to say a really, really sharp and good chef's knife. Mm -hmm. So chef's knife is like that, that thicker one. If no one knows what that is, it's like, it's different than a paring knife. So it's a little bit thicker and I was afraid of it for so long, but once you kind of get it and you start to use a really, really good sharp one, you're like, whoa. So it's actually a really good idea to get your knife sharpened. So maybe every six months or so, depending on how much you're using them, uh, there's mobile sharp, sharp, sharp knife sharpeners. That was a tongue twister, or you could even take them into stores and have them sharpen it for you. But I think a sharp knife will actually make your time in the kitchen, either like you dread it, or it's actually not that bad when you have a good sharp knife. 
I love like chopping up vegetables. I think it's so fun and like therapeutic, even like my oldest son, he's 14. He really enjoys helping make dinner too. And he'll be like, mom, these knives are really not sharp. Like, cause he likes cutting stuff up too. And he's like, we need to get these sharpened or <laughs> whatnot. But you're right. It, it, makes saves a time. it saves time. Yeah. For sure. I love that so much. And I love my air fryer. I love my air fryer and I need one of those um, juicers or whatever. Cause I'm always picking seeds out of like lemon water. Oh, you got to get one. It's like, it, just look on Amazon right. or anywhere. It's like less than $10. It's so easy or home goods, wherever, wherever you can find it anywhere. <laughs> Product delivery in a couple days. One day. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, okay. So say your loved ones come home it's the evening and they're like, what's for dinner? And you're like, oh shoot, I hate that question. <laughs> or maybe you're like, yes, what's for dinner? What would be something quick you would make someone if they came home and was like, what's for dinner, Jazz? What would you make in a quick pinch if you had to? So I, okay, I always have salmon. It's always in my freezer, any sort of fish. And if you don't like salmon, then just think of it as chicken. Okay, so I always, always have it in my freezer. There's never a time where I don't have that protein in my freezer. So I'll take one out and then I'll just throw it into a big bowl of water and like, just let it thaw. And it just needs five to 10 minutes, surprisingly, and your salmon will thaw. And then I'll just use any sort of sauce I have. So right now I'm loving pesto. I love salmon with pesto. It's Mm. actually the best. So I just posted a recipe on my Instagram page with the actual details of it, but I'll just slather a little bit of pesto right on top of the salmon, maybe juice some of the lemon with that citrus juicer. And I'll throw that in the air fryer for maybe 10 minutes at 390. And so there's my protein and it has some healthy fats in it too. And then maybe on the side, I'll just scrounge through my fridge. I always have some sort of, or, or, or a freezer. I'll always have some sort of veggie. So whether it's frozen cauliflower, frozen broccoli, fresh asparagus, even like arugula or spinach or something like that, that just sitting in the fridge. I could toss together a quick green salad and it can be as simple. Like we don't have to, like we were talking about in the beginning, we don't have to overcomplicate it. Why? What's wrong with just taking a big bowl of arugula and making like a really fun, healthy dressing, like um, maple syrup and Dijon and olive oil and balsamic and like just mixing that all up and then throwing it onto your arugula and just like so delicious, right? So fresh, so green. You could do that with spinach. You could do that with red leaf lettuce, romaine lettuce. It doesn't, you don't need to add a million ingredients into your salads. It can just be some greens or you can throw in some asparagus into the air fryer. Um, Asparagus is super quick in the air fryer, just a little bit of salt, pepper, lemon zest, and then garlic powder. And then like you know, six minutes and you're done in the air fryer. It's all good to go. So everything could technically come together in like 12 minutes. Um, And if you have time, you can throw in some rice. I always recommend people having like right now they have those, that those rice packets that you grab from the freezer and they're already cooked and you just throw them into the microwave for, you know, two minutes. And then all of a sudden you have this fluffy, either brown or white rice ready to go. So I always recommend just doing like use what you have and what is accessible to you and what your comfort level is. There's nothing wrong with buying frozen rice. And if that's the way you want to work, that's the way just own it and just do it. It doesn't taste any different. It's actually amazing. Um, if you want to make a big batch of rice at the beginning of the week, that can be really affordable. And then every night you can just pair it in different ways. So I'll always make sure to have some sort of protein veggies and some sort of starch just on hand. It's just something that I live by in my, in my pantry, fridge, freezer, whatever it may be. I'm so hungry, like for salmon, asparagus and rice now (laughs) with pesto. My kids love pesto, anything. They love pesto in general. They are like slap some pesto on it. And that's really good to point out, you know, a lot of times, you know, you can find really great sauces and seasonings to kind of spice up something, something as pretty basic as like salmon and asparagus. Although I feel, I feel like asparagus and the air fryer is like candy to me. I don't know why that crispiness. Yeah. I'm just like, <laughs> when I'm eating this, it's so, good. Lemon on, it's so good. <laughs> But I think people sometimes get afraid or just think, I'm just going to use salt and pepper, but there's a lot of really great seasonings out there or dressings you can make on your own based on what you already have in your fridge. Right. Yeah. I'll never forget this, but my best friend was visiting me um, and she was kind of watching me cook. She was sitting at the bar and I was cooking on the counter and, and she looked at me and she goes, Whoa, you are so heavy handed on seasoning. And I'm like, 
ah, I didn't even realize that. That's how you make food taste delicious without adding that extra butter and that oil and frying and all that kind of stuff. Just go heavy on the garlic powder, onion powder, dried herbs, parsley, oregano, thyme, rosemary. Like I could literally just name off 30 different herbs I could add to something and it would just boost the flavor right out the door. What do they say? They say measure with your heart. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I measure everything. I'm always in there like, <laughs> and my, my oldest son, like I said, he likes to cook. He's very like, okay, it says like a teaspoon of this. And I'm just like, <laughs> just throwing it in there. And then it's like to each their own. I'm like, it all yeah. tastes good. It's all good. Exactly. exactly. Um, I know you mentioned with your cooking classes, you'll do like a meal prep class. And I feel like this is something that a lot of folks have the best of intentions doing. I know when I started on my own health journey in 2015, I ordered like the plastic um, meal prep containers on Amazon. I laid them all out and took like a picture, like hashtag meal prep Sunday. And I did it like every Sunday for like a month. And then life got busy or I was like, this is really overwhelming or I'm tired of eating the same thing every week. So then I stopped doing it. It wasn't a habit that wasn't, sustainable for me. And what I've kind of found is like little mini meal preps throughout the week to help me out as far as meal prep goes without it being overwhelming and making those ingredient meals like we were talking about. But I'd love to hear your tips, Jazz, as far as how to meal prep without the overwhelm. So it becomes a habit. So you're able to, you know, put together really great dinners last minute if you need to. Yeah. Um, okay. I really want to try to give tangible tips. Like I want to try to give like really tangible tips that someone's writing this down or taking a note in their head. Okay. So pick a day that works for you. So pick whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be a Sunday, but if, if that's your day off, it could be a good choice. So let's just go for the example of picking a Sunday, Sunday rolls around, give yourself just a teeny bit of time. Maybe it's even like while you're taking a walk or while you're walking your dog or it doesn't matter, just a little tiny bit of time. And um, hopefully you have some ideas of what you want to make. And if not, then what you could do is you could open up like your weekly flyer for your grocery store, for example. So if I go to Sprouts, it's right across the street. I know I'm going to go there. So let me open that up. And maybe just maybe you open it up and it says chicken is on sale, usually $6.99 a pound. And this week it is $2.99 a pound. I'm just throwing it out there. And you're like, that's actually a great, that's a great deal. So chicken on the list. And you can kind of go down and kind of get inspired by the weekly, by the weekly grocery ads. Um, If you're shopping in a farmer's market, you can just browse, but that's for someone who, if you want to save time, if you want to save money, just let, let them do the work for you and just kind of go through that way. If, if you can try to go through your fridge, freezer, and pantry. So open it up, And just see what you have, because I think so many times we like keep all this stuff in there. And then we just are like, oh, we're, we're craving this recipe. And then we'll just go out and buy all new ingredients. Well, what if you already have black beans, but the recipe, you know, maybe that you're looking at calls for chickpeas, just use your black beans. It's all good. It's all about substitutions. Check in your freezer. Maybe you have all of that frozen protein that you had bought on sale a few weeks ago. And let's use that. Or you have a big thing of rice, whatever it may be, just look in your fridge and then and try to supplement your grocery list based off of that. Off of that, it makes it so much easier, less overwhelming. Because when you go to the store, you're not picking up a million different things. You're just kind of supplementing what you already have. So that's my other tip. Um, and then when you get home, this is another like it's it's a very concrete tip. Just take a minute to just wash everything. Wash your apples, wash your pears, wash your cucumbers, wash your tomatoes, wash your whatever you grab, just wash it, your herbs, everything, and then store it in little containers. So I I bought these containers on Amazon and they're just, they're, they're stackable and they have lids. And so, you know, all my cucumbers go in one, all my tomatoes go in one, all my apples go in one, all my pears go in one. And that way it's already washed and ready to go so that during the week when I'm ready to actually cook, I leave my cutting board out on the counter. I leave my sharp knife out on the counter and I just grab that pear and I chop it up and it goes right on my salad versus, okay, well now I have to go grab this and wash this and all these extra steps. And then I also think, take a glance. This is another tip. Take a glance at your week. 
And does your week allow for more time or is it one of those really busy weeks where you're taking the kids to practice and you're doing this and you barely have time to breathe? If it's one of those weeks, maybe you throw, you go into the frozen section at your grocery store and you find some frozen butternut squash, some frozen quinoa and some frozen salmon, for example, that's going to be your base. And you throw that frozen items, whatever it is, maybe into a pot or into the air fryer, whatever it may be, add some cranberries to it, add some feta cheese, and you got a meal in probably. 10 minutes or so. So just kind of understand that way, or maybe just maybe you have a week where you have a little bit of time on you. Maybe you grab that whole butternut squash and you figure out how to chop it yourself, but just kind of figure out what works for you in your schedule. And, um, smoothies are a great idea. I always like to say if someone's kind of getting started and they don't really know how to start, we could do smoothie prep. So a lot of my meal prep classes, we'll do like smoothie prep and we'll prep a whole batch of granola and we'll pep prep a bunch of different smoothies and then they're ready to go. We even add the protein powder and the chia seeds and all that good stuff into the actual baggie so that when you're ready to make your smoothie, it could be a breakfast, lunch, snack, whatever. You could throw it in the blender and add your liquid of choice. So kind of taking all of these things and thinking about all of that, but creating the meals around what you already have and using the power that you have within you. And if it's not that much power during the week, then please opt for those easier options. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I love shopping around pantry or freezer. Cause a lot of times I'll open my freezer and I'll be like, Oh, I forgot I have that. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh, I could have created like a whole meal out of this. Or like, we always have rice in our pantry and like, we could always do something different with it. Just doesn't have to be like white or brown rice. Mm-hmm. I love that so much jazz. And I love how you mentioned doing like the smoothie prep. I'm always like, when I prep something, I'm always like, thank you, Emily from the past. Cause this made this so much easier for me right now. And I'm a big fan of like frozen veggies or like you said, you know, getting frozen quinoa and just putting it all together because it's there for that convenience, but it's not like a fast food convenience item. It's a fast, healthier option. You're going to feel so much better doing that versus doing like a McDonald's drive through for sure. Oh yeah. And then also I just remembered this, but I just did this last night. So if I'm chopping up a salad or if I'm chopping up like ingredients for something, just, just chop double, chop double, and then throw the second amount into like a Tupperware. It doesn't even have it doesn't even need to make sense. Throw all of that into a container. And then tomorrow you open up the fridge and you're like, look at that. My salad's already done. I actually just need to throw dressing on it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. One of the things we talk about, um, as far as like one of our habit hacks, we definitely talk about like looking at grocery ads, but also like grocery pickup, just so you don't have to like physically go in the store and feel overwhelmed from like walking around in the store. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I lived off of that for like two years. Definitely. Oh, and I'm, I'm so close to the grocery store now I can actually walk there, which is really nice. But oh, I like that. For, yeah. For about two years, I all, I only did grocery delivery and it's, oh, oh gosh, it just helps so much time. You can do your laundry, you can get to work, you can take care of the kids you can work out in and someone else is shopping for you well and it's just planning ahead you're like if I have like there's times I want to go to the grocery store and walk around and have the experience Mm -hmm. of pushing the cart and doing things I'm like well this week's a little more hectic I'm gonna do a grocery pickup oh I have these frozen things on hand to make a quick meal or hey like you said I have extra time I'm gonna create something a little bit more that's gonna take a little bit more time And then just being super intentional with your time will allow you to make food choices that are going to make you feel just really just lit up right from the inside out. Yeah, totally. I completely agree. I think just, again, going back to that, I guess that theme of bio-individuality, don't compare your journey to anyone else's, just do what's right for you and your family at the moment. Things will evolve, things will change, but just honor yourself and try to take care of yourself the best that you can. And maybe the best that you can is throwing in a frozen pizza that you have in your freezer, but have that frozen pizza on hand and have grace for yourself so that when those times hit and when it gets really tough, it's okay to throw in that extra frozen pizza, maybe throw in some, some veggies that you have right on top of it and just, and call it a night. Okay. I'm, uh, I, we do a frozen pizza usually every Friday night, which is (laughs) is part of like a fun experience for the kids and us, but we always do like some big veggie with it too. Mm, There you go. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) I don't feel guilty about it whatsoever. And I enjoy it very much. Jazz, thank you so much for this conversation. Where can everyone connect with you, learn how to take your online cooking classes? Where can they find all the things? 
Okay. So I'm super active on Instagram. It's recipes. And then the number four and then health. So recipes for health on Instagram, on TikTok, on Pinterest. And my website is jazzrecipesforhealth.com. And that's actually where people can find my cooking classes. So I have a membership base where you can get access to, I have over 60 on-demand videos now. So it's all the live cooking classes are always recorded. And then all the PDFs are included in there. So you can find that all, or you can pop in and take one meal prep class or one fun week, week night class and I'm actually Persian so I host a lot of cultured like Persian cooking classes too so So really fun like stews and I've actually veganized a lot of them so they're without meat it's just my own little play on them but I can even do if you want we can talk about it right now but we could do a giveaway or we could even do um, you know a discount of some sort what what do you want to do totally totally well, let's do a giveaway because I think everyone listening is probably going to be like, oh, yeah, I would totally be down for this. But to actually get them to go and like register for a class, let's do a giveaway. So we'll post in the show notes how you can enter the giveaway. And when the show comes out, we'll put in a social media post and we'll um, kind of co- co-coordinate with that with each other. Jazz. I, 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 love love that. I love it. We could do Yeah, we could do a social media giveaway. Maybe let's give away. Let's do three. I want to, let's be, I want to do three, let's do three one month memberships. And then that that way they can join all the live classes. I love it. I love it. And I'll throw it. I'll probably throw in um, one of my mini courses as well too. Let's just, let's just have fun. Yeah. Let's give it a All right. We'll include all the links in the show notes for you and more details on this fun giveaway that Jazz and I are going to be doing for you all. But Jazz, again, thank you so much for this conversation. I think everyone is going to rewind and take some notes furiously again and listen to this again. Thank you so much, Emily. I'm so, so grateful. Jazz, thank you so much for this conversation. Like I kept saying, I'm like super hungry now. And I've actually brought my air fryer out more since we last spoke because it is such a great gadget to save time and reheating stuff. You know, I always use it to reheat veggies the next day after I've um, cooked them the night before. So, so many great tips for you all. Let me break down our three biggest takeaways, your cliff notes, if you will, of my conversation with Jazz Leaf. So number one, there are no rules. There are no rules. Get back to the basics, right, when it comes to cooking. Just get back to the basics. Have some really simple staple ingredients in your pantry, in your freezer, and just put it together. Put some fun seasoning and make it fun. Incorporate your family, your kids into cooking. Make it fun fun and you will feel more confident. You'll build a habit of confidence in the kitchen when it comes around to cooking. So I love this so much. There are no rules. You don't have to follow a, you know, 100 bullet point recipe that overwhelms me. I love, you know, Googling recipes, but then when I see it's super duper long, I tune it out automatically and I'm really bad at following recipes. (laughs) <laughs> anyway, I season with love. I season with love. But keep that in mind. There are no rules, okay? So set yourself up for su- success right here with saying there are no rules when it comes to cooking and meal prep. So Jazz brought up a really great term that I wanted to talk about. Number two, my biggest takeaway was bio-individuality. I love this. So I think it's important to experiment with different forms of eating and see how it feels for you. What may work for someone may not work for someone else. You know, we brought up the smoothie example. I love smoothies so much, so, so much. It's one of my favorite meals to have usually when um, I'm done coaching in the mornings, mid-morning. That is like my first big meal of the day a lot of times, and you can really load it up. But in the winter, I just cannot. I freeze my butt off. Like, I feel like I have to drink it as fast as I can, or if it's a big smoothie bowl, eat it with all the other stuff in it and go get a hot steaming shower because I'm so cold. Whereas that might work for, might or might not work for you. But also listening to your body. Jazz brought up, you know, if raw veggies don't agree with you, try steamed veggies instead. And, you know, she said what fuels her body may not fuel your body as well. And when we're talking about fueling your body, we're not just talking about like healthy nutrition nutritional foods. I'm also talking about like what fuels your soul, right? Like tacos fuel my soul. It makes me so happy creating different taco dishes, but also going out and having tacos with 
my friends. So thinking about in terms of food freedom, what fuels you nutritionally, what fuels you as in your soul as far as food goes, but being aware you have your own bio individuality and being okay with that maybe changing over time as you change as well. And then lastly, this is kind of like one big, big takeaway was she shared some amazing habit hacks in the kitchen to help you save time. So utilizing gadgets like your air fryer, um, your slow cooker, having like a sharp knife, you know, not slowing yourself down. I love how she mentioned to schedule a day to meal prep. I love this habit hack so much. So schedule a day to meal prep where you are, you know, okay, I got time to do an hour of like I'm going to cook some chicken and put some um, veggies in the oven and I'll be able to put it all together later into various ingredient meals like we talk about. We talk about that a ton in Whole30 anytime and in my signature program, Self Transform You too, because I, like I said, I cannot follow a big bullet <laughs> recipe and I'm sure that's very challenging for others as well. I love how she mentioned to shop your pantry, wash and put everything away after you go to the grocery store score this grocery store <laughs> and then a really great tip that I, I it's a really easy example she brought up and it just was kind of like a light bulb moment for me like yes yes look at your schedule for the week do you have a crazy busy schedule you're not going to spend some time cutting up a whole butternut squash or a spaghetti spaghetti squash by the way that scares me <laughs> cutting those up that that takes some practice and some finesse i love um, roasting those in the oven and making spaghetti from sp spaghetti squash for me and my kids but also if it's going to be a not so busy week you can't spend the time cutting up that butternut squash if it's not then buy some frozen it's already diced up for you, bam, you are good to go. And being okay with that. It doesn't have to be hours in the kitchen. You know, like she said, use your air fryer, throw something in there that you have in your freezer at all times. That's going to be a quick, easy, nutritious meal, especially when you're running your kids everywhere every evening. And you want to be able to fuel your body instead of going through like the McDonald's drive through Trust me, there is a time and place. I like a Chick-fil-A or a Qdoba uh, quick meal, if you will. But if you have a plan and you're intentional, look Looking ahead at your schedule, shopping your pantry and your freezer, thinking of what can I put together, it's going to save you so much time. This is such a great habit hack to schedule out your meal prep, shop your pantry, and then use the gadgets that you have in your kitchen or that Jazz recommended to us to help you save time. Cooking should be a beautiful thing. Meal prep is a really wonderful way to practice self-care in my opinion and it does take some practice. It does take some trial and error and you know switching around depending on what season of life you are in but I know you can incorporate some easy meal prep and these cooking habit hacks that Jazz shared with us today. So gang make sure you entered the giveaway that Jazz and I are doing Follow us both on Instagram and like the post with the giveaway information. By this Friday, the 8th of July, Jazz and I will announce the three winners who will get a one month free subscription to her online cooking class and three winners that will also get, it's the same three winners, those three winners will also get my Habits That Stick starter kit. I am so excited to see who wins and to watch you incorporate some easy meal prep into your life. Like I said, we're wrapping up our food series this Thursday with Habit Hack Thursday. I got a fun habit hack for you, of course, around food. Make sure to check out the courses online. Enroll in the ones that are speaking to your heart. My DMs are always open to answer any of your questions. I'm sending you a big ol' hug. Now, I gotta go get my air fryer out and make some dinner. I am starving after having this conversation with Jazz. Jazz, thank you again so much. I have everything linked in the show notes so you can connect with her as well. So amazing. I appreciate the tips. And gang, I will check in with you later this week for Habit Hack Thursday. Go enter the giveaway. Good luck. Hey girl, real quick before you go, if you want some free motivation texted to you every week from me to help you Habit Hack your health, send me your favorite emoji to 773 904 2157 and sign up for my weekly pump up text. I can't wait to catch up with you there. 
Hey, and if you love the podcast, the number one way you can thank me is to leave a rating and review in iTunes. That way more mamas can also find the show. Then you can even email me a screenshot of your review and I'll send you either a Starbucks gift card or give you a free habit hacking call with me live on the podcast. Love and appreciate you, friend. I'll see you next time.